All right, so we're gonna be making this farm right here. It's an AFK farm and it is only effective if you AFK a lot, but when you do AFK a lot, it makes a ton of money. So I made 30 mil from it, you can see that video. But yeah, it does depend on how many minions you have and what level your pets are, but at the very least it will double your minion speed. This is for 24 minion slots, and even if you don't have enough to fill it up all the way with all 24 minion slots, you can still build it this exact size, because when you unlock more you can just place them right in there and you don't have to expand the farm after that. So this is the uh, things you'll need. You need about 33 stacks of building blocks. I think stone bricks look nice and they're only one coin a piece. 231 cactus, which is three stacks and 39. 77 sand, which is a little more than a stack of sand, and then 24 oak fence gates, as well as six and a half stacks of hoppers. Now, the storage size is, um, you can change it, you can make it bigger or smaller. The mats in here are only used for the actual machine and not the storage size. If you want to increase the storage size, you will need a lot of chests and more hoppers, and you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. And then also we will be needing a magical water bucket, which is pretty cheap. So the first step is we want to make a 9 by 53 platform. So if we go this direction, 9 blocks, this block right here counts as 1. So 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we can go down 53 blocks. Now again, this corner piece counts as 1 block, so we have 52 blocks right here is an easy way just to tell without counting. So once the stack is gone, we'll know we have gone a total of 53 blocks. So we'll go 9 blocks out again, and this corner piece counts as 1. So 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And as you saw, one of those blocks got glitched a little and unplaced. So you want to make sure that you're counting correctly. And then we can fill this part in like so, all the way down to the end. Alright, so it should look like this right now. And then you can take your builder's wand and fill it in. If you don't have a builder's wand, you can just place it by hand. But this makes it a lot easier as you can see. Alright, so here's what it looks like right now. The next step is to make another 9x53 platform five blocks away. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And then we want to make our other platform. So a 9x53, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the 53. Yes, this is five blocks apart, so we go down 53. And then we can go out 9 this way. Remember this corner block counts as one of the 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 there, and then connect these. So these 5 blocks here in the middle are just temporary blocks, so we can break them now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then fill this part in either by hand or using the builder's wand. So now this is what you should have, two identical 9 by 53 platforms. So now we want to build walls on the outside layers, so we'll make it 7 high, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then this all the way around on the outside. We will keep the inside layer, where these two platforms are facing each other. We will keep these clean without any walls. You can use the builder's wand to do this, or build it by hand. So now we have this with walls on three of the four sides, where we keep the middle layer, or the inside layer. We keep that clean and then just build these three walls. 
and we want to do the same thing with this platform as well. So now it should look like this. We have two identical platforms and this wall is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven high all the way around except for the inside layer. Okay, now we will start building the middle. So if we go down one block and then out one block and then out one more like this and we can break these blocks here. Those are temporary blocks and then make this a three wide so it looks like this. It is one layer underneath the platforms and then there's one space in between them as well. And then we'll do this all the way down to that side. So this here won't quite reach the wall, it will be one block short. And then we do that for each of these three rows. And if you do have a builder's one, you can just click it here and it completes that whole area. Next step is the sand. If we grab the sand here, we want to place it in a checkered pattern, so like this, and then all the way down. So it alternates two, one, two, one, two. And there we go, the sand should be at an even level with our two platforms. Alright, this next step we are going to backtrack a little and break every single cobble brick or stone brick or whatever um, building block you're using. You want to break each one that does not have the sand on top of it. So do this all the way through. So this is what it should be looking like right now. Whoops, we missed one block down here. There we go. This is what it should look like. It's a bit of a weird pattern in the middle with our two platforms on the outside. Okay, next we want to take a few temporary blocks. We can use the stone bricks here, or any block you want as long as you can easily break it, because we'll place one here, and then here, and here. And then we can break these two. So it should be at a diagonal of this row of stone bricks and then do this like so all the way down. Okay, next step we want to grab our hoppers. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So every time there's a hole in our checkered pattern of blocks here, you want to place the hopper into the temporary block. So as we can see, there's a hole above, so we place our hopper like this. And then again right here where we have a hole, we place our hopper. And then here, and here. And as you can see, it alternates every block. Just make sure you place it where there's a hole above it. So do this all the way down. Okay, so it should look like this, and then now we can place our other hoppers facing into these original hoppers. So here, and here, and here. You just want to make sure you are shift clicking onto the side of the hopper and not into our temporary block. And then lastly, we place our last hopper here. And we can now destroy all of these temporary blocks. We don't need them anymore. So now we start back here and we place two hoppers, like this, into our first row of hoppers. And then two hoppers here, like so. Just shift click to place them.
Alright, and now it should look like this, where these hoppers are all going into this row of hoppers. Now from the top view we have something like this, and yeah, there are a lot of hoppers, so we will be placing more. So every time you see the gap here, we just place two, so it is even level with the sand. And then two, and two. So we're kind of filling in our checkered pattern here. And do this all the way down. So next step, we are almost done with our hoppers. We want to fill in this line all the way down with hoppers. Now the way this works is every time we see a hopper here at the top block, we place another one into it. Like this. And then every time there's a sand block here, we place our hopper into this one to the side. So a fast way to do this is to fill in our hoppers like this. Every time we see a hopper at the top block, we place another one into it. And then we can go through again, and every time there's a sand block, we place our hopper into the other hopper, like this. And now we do the exact same thing, except on the other side. And our next step is we're going to place our fence gates. So you can use any type of fence gate, it doesn't matter. And to place a block right here. Now this is a three gap um, from the wall to this block, and then the three block gap from the ground to this block. And then we place another one here. So there's another three block gap there. And we do this all the way across. And then we can place one more block here with our fence gate and then open the fence gate and then repeat this. And now that we have this like here, we can repeat this on the other side. And now we will take our cactus this step is very simple. On every single sand block, we just go three cactus up. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then all the way down. So we want to take our magical water bucket now and then at the very bottom layer of the wall, we can place it all the way down on both sides. All right, and then if there is this kind of gap here, then just replace the water, and there we go. We'll now do the storage system though which is pretty simple, but it will take a lot of hoppers and chests. All right, so we go to this side of the hoppers where we have every other hopper pointing outwards, and we can place a chest here and then here to make it a double chest. Now we place it on the hopper that is facing outwards. So now the, the box that go, or the drops that go into this hopper will flow into this chest. And then we do it into this hopper here as well, and we can ignore the ones that are facing into the other hoppers. So it will end up being every other block. So now to increase the storage system, we can place a chest right underneath it. You can shift and click, and then another one here. 
to make it a double chest, and then like so. And then you can place a hopper that is facing into this chest. You can do the same exact step like this where we place the double chest underneath it like a stairway, and then the hopper like this. You can go as far down as you want to. This is totally up to you. The bigger you make it, you'll have to collect it less often, which is nice. So you can go, you can put a lot. As you can see in our first one, we placed it quite a ways down. Now, if you want to increase this even more, you can place a temporary block right here, and then a double chest, and then break the temporary block, and then place two hoppers in this way. And then two chests, and two hoppers, two chests, and two hoppers, and so on. So now we can place our minions on this block right here. There, This farm is made for slime and magma cube minions, but other minions such as the pig minion, the spider minion, and then uh, the cow minion here, these will work as well. But typically if there's a mob that has a one block hitbox, like that's, and it's pretty small, it will just sit right here on this line of hoppers. After we place our minions, we want to break these blocks here, so our minions cannot spawn any mobs on them. It will try to spawn the mob on this fence gate because it thinks it's a solid block, but the mob will just fall straight through. So as you can see, the pigs do kind of sit on the hoppers, but once more pigs spawn, they will push them into the hoppers. And the, spider, the spiders are getting killed, but they still can climb up a bit. So you can see that the slime is being killed most effectively. This cow will sit here on the hoppers until another one is spawned, and which will get pushed into the cactus. Now cave spiders are not the best, as you can see, they will just go straight through. But they will eventually die. But if you want the most effective, then use slime or magma cube. And then we can see now that these drops should be getting sorted into our storage system down here, as you can see. Now when you are offline, the minions will still produce the same amount of drops as they normally would, but when you're on your island, then this machine will double the drops. So if you are offline though, the minions will fill up their own storage. So if you want to place storages, you can place them here, right behind it. You can break a block in the wall, and then just place it like so. And as you unlock more minion slots, you can then start to place them on these blocks here, and then these ones here, and then remember when you place it, just to destroy these temporary blocks down here. For AFK, you can just make an AFK pool, or use a cookie, and then you won't get AFK kicked. But the islands do reset, and it's a little bit random. But if you click F3, you can see it says Day 1 right here. and the lower the day, the less chance of getting kicked. So you can always go into the hub and then wait a little bit for your island to reset and then once you join back it will say day zero and then there's a less chance that you'll get kicked. Obviously the more time you spend AFKing on your island, the more money you'll make.